Welcome back to Module 7, where we're going to exclusively focus on the importing and purchasing process. After completing the last module, you should have already spoken to an accountant and have your company either set up or have it in the process of being set up. If the entity is in place, you're going to be in a position to begin the purchasing process, which naturally leads into the importing of your item or items into either one of two markets. Before we go into each step in detail, it makes sense to begin this module with a 30,000 foot view of the overall process so that you understand how everything flows and ties in together. Once you understand this process, you'll be able to do it for the rest of your business career with ease. But don't expect to understand everything from day one as there are many moving parts. Let's dive in. As always, let's take a moment to review this module's objectives and discover what you're about to learn. The first objective again, once you have your business entity in place, is to agree your final order with your supplier for each product. This involves confirming the quantity, pricing and so on. Once you've done that, you're going to arrange payment for the order and then immediately connect your freight forwarder to the supplier. This is a very important step that I'll repeat throughout this module. So many sellers wait until their order is complete to speak to a freight forwarder. This quite simply is the wrong way to go about things, as you'll see when we dive into that part of the module. Next, you'll arrange shipment to the destination country with your freight forwarder. This will initiate the shipping of your items. Once they're loaded onto a container and then onto a container ship, they'll eventually be received and cleared into the destination country. I'll go through this process in detail, as well as how to acquire what I call HS or harmonized codes. Finally, we'll send the goods into the pre-Amazon location freight hub and then into one or more of Amazon's fulfillment centers. I'll go through the hub to Amazon process in the next module. As you can see, there's a lot to dive into, so let's get started. Okay, so let's give you a 30,000 foot view of how the whole process works together. The first step in our process is quite simple. You're gonna choose your shipping method. In other words, you're going to determine whether you're shipping your items via air or via sea. You'll do this by speaking to your freight forwarder, who will give you a quote for both methods. Also, it depends on the overall size and weight of your order, as you'll soon see. Once we know how we're shipping the item, we'll then order the goods by initially paying an order deposit with our supplier. We'll go into the different payment terms that may be available to you at this point as well. This marks the beginning of the production of our items. As I mentioned earlier in this video, it's at this point that we'll engage the freight forwarder over email or whatever method of contact they utilize with us. We'll give them all the details we have available to us and ask them to get us a quote for shipping. Once production of your order ends, we'll pay the order balance and have the forwarder take over to ship the items. Your items will then be loaded onto the shipping vessel and will begin their journey from supplier location to destination. Once the items arrive in the country of destination, they'll have to clear customs. This will involve you paying your customs fees, import taxes and freight. Once the items are released and are officially yours, the items will arrive at a location, usually your freight forwarder's freight hub. This is where we'll end the process for this module. As you can see, there are a number of steps, but most of them are quite simple. I want to talk you through each step so you know what to expect every step of the way. A theme you'll see me return to is the importance of your freight forwarder here. They will take care of most of the hassle for you in this process, which makes them an invaluable part of your team. Be sure to use one and use them wisely as it will reduce your requirement to get involved, which will most certainly save a lot of time for you. Here's what the shipping process looks like graphically. This should help you get a clear picture in your mind of what's going to happen step by step. As you can see, everything begins with the invoice produced by your supplier. We then get in touch with the freight forwarder and connect to the factory. We then pay our deposit and begin production. Once production ends, we pay our balance, which then results in us receiving our purchase invoice, PI, and release of the items from factory to container vessel. The items then leave the factory and are transported inland to the port that you agree with your supplier. The freight forwarder has taken over at this point and is working with your supplier. The items then leave via air or sea and arrive in your country of destination where you'll pay import taxes and customs, allowing the goods to be released and transported to the final destination. And that's how it all works. Simple, right? So a few things to be aware of when you're going through the process. First, avoid trying to rush or expedite the process. There are many, many cogs in this wheel, 
all of which takes some time to complete. When the order is in motion, don't obsess over when things are about to arrive. Use the transit time to research more items and refill your pipeline while waiting. This is definitely easier said than done, but trust me, it will help you out considerably. The issue with many sellers is that they're shipping small quantities of items and become excessed. So they hound the freight forwarder who is dealing with many, many larger orders at the same time. This in itself can cause stress from both your side and the freight forwarders. My advice is to focus on making sure all the pieces are in place for the item's arrival. Once you do that, know that production takes as long as it takes. There's no one size fits all time that you're going to be looking at. Shipping that takes a shipping, that too takes as long as it takes, as does customs clearance. As you become a more experienced importer, you'll find that you won't obsess over these processes as much. Try to take my advice from day one and go back to the research process. You're doing that already, right? Remember, you're not the only person shipping items. I'm certainly not trying to be negative or nasty here, but it is something you've got to realise. We must remind ourselves about this too when we're going through these processes. Also, the smaller your shipment, the smaller your voice. In time, your voice will certainly become more prominent as you import larger quantities of items. But know that when starting out, your shipments are going to be small. Now, it's not that your shipment isn't important. It is, but the entire container ship doesn't revolve around your order. This might sound ridiculous, but when I started doing this, because I could only focus on myself, I forgot about the hundreds, not th if not thousands, of other containers on the same ship. The fact that this whole process happens as quickly as it does is actually a miracle in itself. Let's move on to the first step in the process now, which is determining which way you're going to ship your items. 